It's our pleasure actually to uh, be the first ever presentation at an academic uh, track at OSM and uh, we are going to uh, present this jointly so uh, hopefully without practice this is going to go uh, smoothly. Uh, we decided to show you a scientific slide with some symbols in it first because we're going to talk about uh, a two-sided story here. We're looking at translating the needs of uh, scientists for OpenStreetMap and then the other side of the story which is translating the needs of OSM into uh, language that's understandable by scientists and then we want to see where these two things actually overlap. The overlap is what we're very interested in is where the two communities can begin working together. Now that will require scientists welcoming OSM and OSM welcoming scientists and vice versa and actually how can that happen. So at the end of the presentation we hope to have some discussion with you on how we can uh, move forward uh, in that respect. Just to give you a timeline of this idea, this is a, a non-traditional academic talk and we don't have a set of experiments here and analysis and some conclusions. Uh, we were talking and hand-waving uh, a little bit. Uh, back last April there was a, an excellent workshop that I helped co-organize in, in Leuven in Belgium which brought together national mapping agencies volunteer geographic information project like OSM, academics and industry together to talk about how crowdsourcing could be used in national mapping. And during the breakout sessions, Eust, Frank and a few others, we began to talk about how we could bring OSM and the academic community together in a tangible way. So we had some Skype calls during our, our holidays last summer. We then created uh, an OSM science mailing list. We produced a blog post and then uh, we went into hibernation for the winter time and then we decided that the best way to kick this off would be to take the opportunity to, to submit to uh, State of the Map and here we are at the academic track. So I think uh, this slide summarizes really what uh, we believe is our, uh, our goal here today that on our collective observations as academics as OSM contributors and then users of OSM data because we all are users of the data. There's much room for improvement between the academics involved in OSM research and the OSM community and there's actually two sides to this story. So well, that's uh, really close. Is that good? Yeah. Uh, I, I learned yesterday that I should put this to my chin because otherwise I, I do this and you don't. I don't know, hear anything. Anyway, um, so from the OpenStreetMap side, you could say that um, one of the problems is that we don't always hear about all the research, or when we do, it's, uh, it, it's in passing, and it's very hard to understand. Um, so um, there is definitely a, a chance to, uh, to improve the way it's communicated towards the community. Um, and on the other hand, of course, um, the uh, academics, when they start doing their research, the, the timing of involvement with the, the wider OpenStreetMap community isn't always uh, optimal. Um, like, uh, well, it starts at the beginning. Um, what are we going to research? Um, there's a lot of open questions that the community has. And that's not always the things being researched. And probably that's because we don't formulate the questions clearly <laughs> because we're a chaotic bunch. Um, uh, so yeah, um, basically that's our core question. How can we, how can we improve this? How can we um, work together so that there's a, a constant uh, link between us um, and that uh, research would be more interesting? Is it still working? Yeah, okay, thanks. <laughs> um, so that the research would be more interesting both for uh, community and scientists. So the, 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 in our equation that we, we posed a few minutes ago, the first thing is looking at scientific needs and trying to communicate them uh, in an in a understandable way to the OSM community. And <coughs> I suppose uh, looking out, I can spot lots of uh, academic colleagues uh, by familiarity or just by uh, seeing you at other conferences and what us academics tend to do is there is an increasing scientific interest in OSM and that's very easy to, to, to show through uh, looking at 
the number of papers, the number of workshop, uh, workshops and conferences that have been organized with OSM as a central part of the discussions. Now, scientists need to publish their work. That's how uh, we get paid. That's how we uh, get our next grant. That's how we get our next uh, promotion, hopefully. And scientists are very interested in, in VGI, including OSM. And what can happen sometimes is that the academic can formulate the research problems about VGI and OSM around their perception of what the gaps are, rather than actual on-the-ground understanding of what those gaps are. So the scientific perception may not always be useful for the simple uh, fact that the OSM community is a global community and it is not easy to understand. It's not easy to build a community, it's not easy to, f to maintain a community. So it's a problem in that as, uh, academics can be detached from the community without really understanding uh, how, how it works. There's also the issue of translating those results from scientific research to OSM. So people in the OSM community are often very technically minded, they're often scientifically minded, but they may not just be uh, familiar with a lot of the jargon and terminology used by scientists sometimes. So scientific papers tend to have a format and a template that involves a lot of jargon. Scientific output, most importantly, tends to be inaccessible. Uh, it tends to be behind paywalls. It tends to be in hidden places on the internet. The dark academic web, where people who are not academics uh, cannot find it. And sometimes the scientific merit is difficult to judge. So a paper may look very good on the outside. It might have lots of equations. It might have machine learning. It might have big data in there. But the actual value of it to OSM or the VGI community may be difficult to, dis to uh, understand. And it can very often be the case that it can be difficult to distinguish between two scientific papers doing the same job. So something that we're interested in, in tackling, and it was Frank that uh, suggested this, is that the academic community should be proposing an idea of a translation where we can start to make it more accessible to people to understand the results that we're producing. So to stop producing academic mumble jumble or mumbo jumbo and producing actual information and knowledge for people to use in the, in the community. And uh, the hottest uh, state of the map that I was in was in Girona in 2011 uh, when it was 40 degrees, I think. So mm -hmm. it makes today sound... Uh, temperate. Uh, Mucky Hackley suggested a seven rule step for academics working with OSM and as uh, our parents would say it's as true today as it was then. Academics should try to do some mapping so I do do some mapping. They should try to read the content produced by the community, explore the data so be a user of the data, try to put your outputs in, in open access so that people not just OSM people, that anyone can access them. Uh, then publish and share data that you've uh, pr processed. So this, this looks at reproducible science. And be a critical friend to OSM. So it's, it's OK to say, I think you could improve X, or I think you could improve Y. But demonstrate rationale behind it. And then teach. Uh, I teach in the university. And every course, I try to get OSM web mapping and OS geo type things into the, those courses. So it's important to try and uh, bring along the next generation of, uh, of mappers and uh, geo enthusiasts. So now we look at the why part, of the, which is translating OSM needs into science. Uh, so one of the things we did was uh, try to get um, a feeling for the ideas that live within the community, because there's, there are some wiki pages with those ideas, but they're uh, not really maintained and not many people edit it and when you ask questions on our mailing lists you tend to get more answers than you want so that was in this case that was what we wanted um, so we, we got a, a very diverse um, uh, response when we uh, explicitly asked about what we should be doing and what uh, the research community should be doing uh, we picked some uh, interesting examples from that um, for me, the, uh, the research wiki page is among the most important. We should really, um, uh, I don't know, uh, just start working on it um, to make it uh, more <laughs> uh, a landing page, let's say, for scientists 
um, as well as that the, um, uh, all the research that's listed there is maybe not the best way to present results to the community. Um, let's see. Um, so, yeah, there's very interesting uh, ideas. Um, I, I guess you get the link of the presentation afterwards if you want to look at them in detail. Um, I, I think the last one here is also important. It's, it's more like... Um, uh, a frustration, I guess, from uh, some people within the community that some research with they which they perceive as poor quality or, or headlines derived from them keep coming back and you have to keep explaining, like, meh, that's really not the best uh, analysis. Um, so it, it would be helpful if, if it's, it's that kind of uh, thing is better documented. Um, so right now the OSM Wiki l looks like that. I think for me that's one of the main projects to, to handle together to see wh where we should go with that. Um. So I suppose that's, this is the academic equivalent of the research wiki page, something like the Science Direct search, which you, you may or may not have heard of. So this is very easy for myself to log in via my work login and you can access pretty much any publication ever created on OSM. To show the popularity, there's, there's 500 results there for just an OS, OSM search in, in the last two years. So this is welcoming for academics. Academics feel at home and very comfortable around these pages. But uh, a citizen or anyone looking at this outside of an institutional logon or paying large fees uh, cannot access many of these. Now, some of them are open access, but, but many of them are not. So, where does the overlap, the intersection lie? And that's the, the question that we're ending the presentation with today is, is looking at where can we find a, a suitable middle ground here for the two communities to begin working together. So the proposal we have is... <laughs> Uh, well, we, we think we might need to extend our, uh, the, the way we ask the question. Um, so move forward based on the ideas we already generated and see if we can find a, a way to um, uh, survey the wider community to get uh, more structured input to, uh, or to find methods to use uh, structured community input uh, to, to find our uh, priorities. If, yeah. Yeah. Um, and another tool um, that we already started with, so we, we have the wiki, of course, which is a, a main uh, project. Um, two other ones is that we started uh, the science mailing list. So within uh, the mailing list system of the OpenStreetMap community, which is still, it's very old school, but it's still one of the main channels, especially for the global community. Um, so there is a, a, a group of people there already who are interested in the subject. There hasn't been much activity, but I think if there is a, a, a real question from scientists or, or a result posted there and questions about it, that I, I think it would definitely work. Um, the, the other main issue is that uh, we should do stuff and we we really want to but then reality happens um, and that's why uh, we think um, uh, github based planning might be useful so we already started it the url is there and some of the sub problems uh, we already defined are already listed so it's it's um, you can already give uh, structured ids uh, or in the right place I, it's it's, a, it's i think it's a good place to discuss ids and to hopefully turn them into tasks uh, that then get done. So and that, that brings us nicely on to then who is going to do that stuff uh, that uh, if, if we go ahead and, and find that there is possibility of doing a survey like this uh, that who would be involved so academics often put their hands up and say I'll be involved and then are involved for two or three days and then you never see them again uh, and at the other side OSM people are busy with doing OSM stuff. So we have to see that the people involved in, in building this collaboration and to work on suggestions in the survey uh, are able to do so. So everyone's workload is, is heavy regardless of, of which side of the equation you're on. And then how do we do stuff? So how do we build this, this coordination? So the GitHub seems like a, a really nice way to, to centralize this where people can pose problems and we can collect that information and it's, it's easily, easily searchable. Uh, but to do that stuff, 
maybe the mechanics are easy, it's actually doing it uh, is the difficult bit. And this is where we close with some audience participation. So what we're hoping to do is, is buy some time in the last few minutes and get some ideas that we can write down and expand on. And of course, we're here all day then for the academic track. So uh, please feel free to continue to give us ideas uh, and thoughts over the day. So thanks for listening to, uh, to our part. Uh, thanks a lot for the presentation. Ah, you, okay. I missed the first uh, minutes, so I'm a bit uh, ashamed to, uh, to be you know, talking now. Um, I, I saw a website called Open Science Portal. Um, it's a website where um, academics share their data. Uh, so uh, it seems that w what, I, what I heard actually already uh, partially exists. Uh, I, I've seen this, uh, you know, I've, I've seen academics, uh, um, scientists, anthropologists share their data set. But what it seemed to me is that they're not able to structure their data set in a proper geographical, uh, with proper geographical structures. Um, uh, so what do you think about... Um, uh, you know, the fact of actually pushing for, for that uh, and maybe uh, build something within what is already existing? Or do you, do you think it's still necessary to build something outside of what's already shared by, by academics uh, on the internet openly? Okay, I'll uh, take this as an off-the-cuff answer. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with that website and uh, we, we are going maybe a step just before that, that uh, Obviously, with people sharing their data on the internet, there, there are issues about structuring it in, a, in an open, in a structured and accessible way. What we're looking at is a little bit tangential to that, is looking at problems that maybe the OSM community can suggest to the academic community to work on, or the academic community can pose problems that they consider for OSM, and we find a middle ground. So it's, it's slightly different one of the outputs should be the academic sharing what outputs they, cre they create in an open way. So it's, I think uh, Open Science Portal is a little bit different. And I suppose one of the problems there might be that some of the scientists involved just may not be aware of how important it is to, to structure things in, in a, a structured format. So we are, we are a little bit, ta in a, maybe tangent is the wrong word, probably parallel to the concept of of sharing the data. That would be one of the, the, the streams that we're looking for, but not the only thing. Hi. Um, I was just thinking about um, the scheduling of, of something like this, um, because I'm just wondering how many people are academics here and how many are non-academics. And Actually, that might be a good Could we have a show survey. of hands, perhaps? Yeah. How many are academics? So, how many aren't academics, and are, you, are we speaking here to the community that you want to get involved with? Um, and perhaps if something like this had been scheduled at the end of a keynote, or later on in the day, I don't know, where there's likely to be um, more of a, an OSM non-academic community, um, where you can showcase this, this kind of work that may have, you know, so perhaps thinking about the next year's date of the map or something. Because yeah. um, it's about reaching that audience, I think, yeah. it, part of it. Um, and, you know, if you can reach the audience, you can then perhaps, oh, this chin thin works. Um, you can perhaps get the audience then on board if, yeah. if, you've, if they're actually open to listening to you in the first place. I think that's part of the, part of the issue. I think, uh, is this working? Yeah. Um, I think part of the problem is that we like to party. <laughs> so yeah, 9.30 on the second day is maybe not a good idea. <laughs> so um, I'll, uh, I'll try and promote, and I did try and promote that everyone at the conference is allowed in the academic track. And yeah, I'm, I'm Todd, so maybe that is the, the case it was a late night. Um, but I think this track, it's great to see this on the conference program. Um, and 
Um, I don't count myself as an academic. My undergraduate work, however, is published in the first proceedings of the State of the Map EU. Um, it's the only time they've done an academic track and, and that conference isn't as regular. Um, but maybe this, my question's probably a bit early in the day, but like, is it good doing this track? And um, obviously, so I do work in a university and there's the, I know there's the grades of conferences of which conferences they want to paper in and how can we kind of get the, the merit of, of this conference up that, you know, supervisors want their students to have papers and present in at this conference? Is it a case of just repeating it or can we can we do more can we tell people that this was a really good conference to go to hopefully it was okay as the, as the academic here I, I'll answer that I think that that's a great a great suggestion because we there, there is a, a possibility where you can over academic over, over identify and maybe is the word this type of uh, suggestion that the academics come in uh, army-like and just swarm the building and take over uh, and we certainly don't want that to happen I think uh, Gregory has touched on it there the, the way these things can become popular with with scientists is is true repeat you know repeat adapt evolve and then repeat again is that this is the first one we look maybe next year at doing this again we look at maybe having this at, at regional uh, state of the maps and uh, there is value in academic uh, outputs that are, are not true the very highest level uh, conferences. There is value in scientists producing outputs that are well used and well cited. So uh, it is something we might look at in, in more published proceedings, but we don't want to over you know, emphasize the academic side. We want to try and look at something that both sides of the community are working together where maybe in a few years time an academic track is just like every other track here that it's not special and it doesn't require people to try and herd uh, non-academics into it on a, on a Sunday morning. So if, if there's any academic talks that we like in the same way as the other talks we should tweet them lots and maybe tweet links to the recordings when they go online? Would that be helpful to I, that I kind of yeah, it's, it's being it's, used yeah, type I, thing? I think not to, uh, to tweet just for the, for the sake no, of it. No, no. If something has, has value, yeah, definitely. The ones that and, are good. Uh, and, uh, and uh, it's, uh, you know, I think we, we, were actually, we actually got quite a response from the academic call. Uh, so it was quite a hard job to pick uh, 12 presentations. And then there's, yeah. there's actually posters that are involved with the academic track as well. So that's a very good indication of interest. And it's... It, the, the job maybe from the state of the map academic track people is to try and uh, repeat that again next year, but maybe go another 10% beyond and, and, cool. and grow like that. Well, hopefully we'll try, won't we, Marco? Okay. Congratulations for this. I think it's really great. And I think... Um, it would be a really great resource for um, faculty and students to sort of really have a good sense of what the needs are. So I'm, I'm really glad to see this is happening. Have you thought about creating some sort of mirror presence or something on some place where faculty already live, like ResearchGate or, um, I don't know, some kind of place where there's people who don't know about OSM per se, but they kind of use that to promote their research and then they can actually discover and find this area. Have you thought about that? Maybe? Uh, I know it's a lot of work, but yeah, I mean, maybe there's a way to just you know, create a presence that then kind of goes back to you know, what you're trying to create on the wiki. I think uh, I, I, a small answer for me, and then and Joost, I think you had a great sentence in his presentation yesterday. It's that academics need to, or people need to talk about OSM in places where people have not heard about OSM. And something like that uh, is, academics need to go to conferences that don't have OSM in the title or VGI in the title and, and talk there. That would engage others. My, my worry about something like ResearchGate is that it is very academic. Uh, so it would 
kind of, it may be a barrier to non-academics, but it's certainly something worth looking at. Uh, what we're trying to do is, is maybe find a middle ground and then let the academics begin to share these experiences and these ideas in, in, in areas like that. I think I was about saying about the same, I thinking about the same thing that uh, it's more like a, a second step perhaps that once we get uh, a better way to get results communicated and, and the questions asked from the community, then we can go to a platform like that and say, hey, we have a research agenda for you. Okay, I think we have to stop here because we have to leave a couple of minutes for those of you who want to change the room and for new people to come in and for the next speaker to present. So thank you very much, Peter and Just.